I love this game with every fiber of my being. I, I've loved it since I was eight years old, and my mom told me that she would buy it if I let my brother share my room with me, and I said yes because I really wanted it, and I played it, and I did New Game Plus over and over again until I was able to beat it, and then I've been beating it over and over and again for years and years ever since, and loving it more every single time I played it. So what I'm going to do this week is kind of give you a glimpse into a unique perspective on this game. Not the Japanese version like it may look like, but the pre-release edition of Chrono Trigger. This was an unfinished beta copy of the game that was released in November 1994, five months before the game's Japanese release in March 1995. Uh, lot, there's lots of little tiny changes and a few big sweeping changes like whole dungeons that were cut from the game. So it's a really interesting glimpse into how the game was and before its release and the kind of things that they were changing in their pursuit of perfection, basically. I've always really admired this intro just because it eases you into the game with such just simplicity compared with something like Final Fantasy IV or VI which with their big sweeping intros and gigantic flashback sequences and the like. So, I've always just liked this game. You, it's a good, like, 30 minutes or so if you haven't played it before, before you get into the time warp and things go topsy-turvy. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Dragon Quest games, like Dragon Quest Three especially, which begins the exact same way, getting woken up by your mom. But I've always just loved how it worked in this game. So, the way the pre-release version is structured is that it's basically the whole game, but it's bottlenecked at several points to it because it wasn't the game wasn't quite finished like Tyrone Allaire crashes if you try to enter it and there are guys like these the imps who just block you that's just a message saying sorry this area is closed off so therefore the press just couldn't get could get kind of a good idea of the game and then there's lots of little tiny changes like here the battle music is a lot chunkier in the bass and there's a whole lot of little tiny music changes like that so exploring this version of Chrono Trigger is really fascinating for a person like me who just can't get enough little weird pieces of trivia about the game. There's even whole tracks that just went completely unused. A few of them made their way into the DS version of Chrono Trigger, like Battle 2 and The Singing Mountain, but a few of them didn't. Uh, I'll, I'll try to show you a couple of them. So, I've showed you the, ba the music, and now I'm going to kind of go off the rails a bit here. And instead of bumping into Marl up here in the place like you're supposed to, I am going to get the Epoch using a built-in programmer flag here. Uh, right now I have the Walk on Walls cheat, and I'm going to toggle that on. It's four different codes, and that'll allow me, allow me to go talk to this flag, and that says Time Machine Get, meaning get Time Machine Get. So now we, I just walk outside. And voila, there's the epoch. Now I'm just going to go through each area chronologically and kind of give you an idea of how this game, how this game is, di this version of the game is different. Uh, already you can see just Melchior's hut isn't over there, but let's go to 65 million BC. And there we go. Actually, I'm pretty sure that the lava flashes a little. Uh, more here, but I haven't looked into it. Alright, here's one of the big changes. Also, you, you can hear the world map theme here is, is slightly different from the final version, if you're as big a nerd as me. And now I'm going to turn on the Tyrannolaire crash cheat, because if, without that cheat on, this, this map will crash when I enter it. You can hear a completely different song in this area that was originally, because this song was originally going to be the Tyrannolaire theme, and... It was also, I think, a boss theme, but yeah, so it's way more like high energy and upbeat than the final theme they use with, with its big foreboding organs. And over here, we see an, an unused village that wasn't present in the final release. Uh, you can't enter any of these areas, unfortunately, so I'll just so I'll just move on. Up here is the Singing Mountain, or what is supposedly the Singing Mountain. We can't actually enter it. So what I'm going to do is use a cheat code to go to the map of the Singing Map Mountain Dungeon, the unfinished dungeon, and uh, just warp there, basically. 
and all I have to do is turn on those cheats and first I'll load down a save state and reset the game. Alright, here we go. We are in the Singing Mountain. You can hear the song, and this is what the dungeon looked like. It's using the prehistoric tile set. It's actually really big, too. There's three separate areas I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, walk through, and also, you don't need the walkthrough walls code here because there aren't any walls programmed in this area yet. It's just visual. I actually read an interview with Yasunori Mitsuda about this particular dungeon uh, in reference to the music and how it wasn't used in the final game. And he stated that they decided to cut this dungeon from the game because there wasn't any major story event happening during it. And they just wanted to keep things more concise in that regard. Uh, I'll now show you a cu the couple other levels in this area. Uh, the, there's the caves and the lava and then the peak. Um, but yeah, Yasunori Mitsuda said that just this dungeon didn't do much to further the plot, so they just cut it, and I think that kind of shows a lot of the discipline of Trigger's development staff, was that they were really devoted to keeping the narrative flowing through all of the different dungeons, and that really translates in the final game, where just every, every level is progressing the story in some way. And I think that's incredibly admirable, and something that a lot of JRPGs could really learn from. The, there's also a number of other tiny translation differences. I've got, a couple of them were obvious holdovers from Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest day, days of development because the game was made by Hironobu Sakaguchi and Yuji Horii in part, who were the main guys behind Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. And the Power and Magic tabs were originally called Power and Magic Seeds, which was a holdover from Dragon Quest. And instead of Haste, Marl had the spell Asuna, which is used in Final Fantasy to cure status effects. And a few of them, a few of them are more, are just kind of weird. Like Alaw's final move was Dino Tail instead of Triple Kick, and that Triple Kick was moved to before Tailspin and Dino Tail. I imagine that was because Dino Tail is kind of similar to Frog's Frog Squash, and also Triple Kick is way more powerful. Although it does, it doesn't really seem like a final move, so it's, it does kind of make sense that it developed that way. Uh, Magus also had Water Two instead of Ice Two, which is just kind of an interesting switch. I, I think they. They just changed it to Ice 2 just to maintain its parity with Chrono Trigger's original three party members of Chrono, Marl, and Luca. Um, also, the funniest ones are probably that Ala's kiss move was called Arousal instead of Kiss, and Frog and Ala's slurp kiss was called Arousing Tongue, which is probably the funniest particular really switch in the game. And I cannot access the epoch. Hmm. Alright, I'll just do load the state again. All the cheats are off. Let's reset it. See if that works. Um, when you're using a bunch of weird cheat codes like this, these kind of funny errors can happen. Uh, also, Chrono's HP and stuff is really weird. Hmm. Well, I guess let's just... I just restarted the game and pause recording and we're back. Alright, let's go. Uh, I guess next area is 12,000 BC, which has another cut dungeon that's kind of interesting. And a few other just tiny alterations that are only interesting to people like me. But I'm going to tell you about them anyway. Let's head down to the Skyway. First tiny alteration here is that they played the Zeal theme on the world map of 12,000 BC before the fall of Zeal. They changed it to Ominous Blowing Wind in the final version. The Skyways here don't have any... Uh, effects yet, and there's no land bridge there. Also, they have these rocks as placeholders for transportation places here. So we're going to go up to the Zeal Palace, because that's where the extra hidden stuff is. That's just particularly interesting. I love this track. It's still present in, it's present in this form in the final game, except one of the later parts the in the song, the instrumentation is slightly off from the final version. Also, the Zeolian sealed doors did not originally depict the Mammon machine right here, as they did in the final game. They had a weird-looking jumblefuck sy symbol there that just... whatever. So, one of the funny things about the walkthrough walls cheat is that you can see the areas that are stored on the same map, but aren't necessarily on the same area. 
That's what I just showed you there at the mammon machine. So let's go to Shala's room right here. And the hidden dungeon is behind her bookshelf. Now this was probably devote, made as some sort of shortcut that led to the Zelian that to the Zelian throne room. But in the final version, you just power up your pendant to the mammon machine and then just go through the front door. And again, that this is kind of another example of them trimming down the fat and exiting out dungeons that don't really need to be there for the sake of narrative propulsion. And so few RPGs do that well. I think Final Fantasy IV has really exceptional pacing all the way through, just as good as Triggers. Um, Mother 3, and that's those are pretty much the only ones I can think of that are as well paced as Trigger. Um, so now we're just going to leave Zeal and head back to the Epoch and see what we can find find back there. Uh, they, these rocks are kind of used as each rock leads to a different place, so I just went through the one. That way that you can get down to over to Kajar on the other side, which also crashes unless you use a certain cheat, but it doesn't really have anything that interesting, so let's just leave via the Skyway. I could almost do a whole video series on this pre-release, just like going through every different area, pointing out all the tiny differences. I, I got most of my information from Croto Compendium, which is just a great site if you're into stuff like this. And so like, you're just going through and pointing out each and one of those things could just be really interesting. Uh, last cut dungeon is present here, but you can't enter it via the world map, so I'm going to again use a cheat code to just cut, jump straight to the map. It's the sealed pyramid, and in the final game it just leads straight to two, two treasure chests when you unlock it with your pendant and a new who tells you that you can pick one or the other that's the sla they has the slasher 2 and the safe helm um which i of course remember so i just used the map here and the trig entrance is right here so instead the sealed pyramid led to a little dungeon with a bunch of treasure chests that you can't open and a completely unique track that doesn't show up anywhere else in trigger so that's kind of interesting but yeah, you can lead to... Messing around with the cheat codes like this can cause a lot of weird glitches. And the all the points, all the stuff, all the event flags are really screwed up. And Huh. Huh. Um. Huh. Okay. So we got three chronos, and I think I can pretty much cut the video off here. Uh, see you next week. And, except I lied. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Using a cheat, I have activated the Hover Epoch. And yeah, it's exactly what it looks like. It's a, just looks like, it's just like the Hovercraft in Final Fantasy IV. It can't go across land, it can only go across land, and no water. And they probably cut it because of a slight aspect about it that's really, really, really clunky. And I'll show you that here. If you go to another time, and then it warps, and you land on something that it can't be on top of, it warps you right back. And that's sort of really, really, really obnoxious. So, yep. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next week.